So the Fed's preferred inflation rose again in January, but right in line with expectations. So does this mean that the Fed's strategy is working? Joining me now is John Carney, Breitbart News Finance and Economics Editor and co-author of the Breitbart Business Digest, and Kevin Hassett, former chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. Good to see you both. Kevin, the Wall Street Journal had a great piece about a guy named Chris Waller. He's a Fed governor, and he was nominated by President Trump. Uh, he was brought to President Trump by a guy named Larry Kudlow, who you may have heard of. And, and this, is, this piece basically said that while everybody doubted, he's, he's, a, he's an inflation hawk, this guy. This is the revenge of the inflation hawks, because everybody was saying that, you know, you had to have a recession in order to, to, you know, you had to have higher unemployment in order to get inflation down. He said, no, you can get inflation down, uh, and we have, we have enough jobs available so it won't increase unemployment. And he was right, wasn't he? I'm not so sure. Uh, oh! You know, the fact is that inflation is down. I'm sorry. I just I, like I disagree. No, I was part of that team that, that chose Waller. But the fact is uh, that inflation over the last few months has been accelerating. And we also know that if you look back over the last 20 years, that inflation sometimes gives you like a head fake in January. And so I'm just I'm right now a little bit puzzled okay. about inflation, but I'm sure it's way above 2%. Okay. And, and so the Fed should not be cutting rates right now. But I think that Waller had a big fight with Larry Summers about whether it was possible to yes. get it down this far. And Summers said no without unemployment. And I think he was right about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what do you think, Waller's. John, by the way? Yeah, so I think that Waller was absolutely right in his fight with Summers. A lot of people said there's no way to get inflation down without raising unemployment. What Waller did is he looked at all the job openings and said, we can bring that down. And if we bring that down, it will help bring mm -hmm. down inflation. That's what happened. But I think Kevin has a good point here in that it's not clear that inflation can keep coming down. Mm -hmm. And Waller's actually been very cognizant of this. He has said, look, right now we have this almost Goldilocks scenario where you have inflation coming down and unemployment staying very low and the economy growing very fast. Yes. He said that can't keep going. At some point, either inflation has to break higher or growth has to slow down. We're not going to keep By the way, you, you got to know this guy, because if Donald Trump is elected in 2026, when Jerome Powell has to go away, and Donald Trump has said he will, this guy might be the next head of the Fed, right? Absolutely. I think that he is uh, have, definitely would be one of the best heads of the Fed we've had yeah. in a very long time because he has a very good analytical mind. He looks at the data and he's able to say, you know what, this is what is happening in the economy. He doesn't just stick to a narrative. He actually says, you know, looks at what's happening and says, I am going to adjust policy based on that. And, and one thing I think you'd agree with, Kevin, is the fact that he, he does disagree with those who say the only way to get inflation down is by having a recession. I mean, he does believe that you can have growth and mm -hmm. lower inflation, the supply side notion, right? Right. I think you absolutely can. But again, don't forget that last year, uh, the government debt uh, held well, by the public went up by more problem. than GDP. Right. And, yep. and so when you've got fiscal policy just putting the pedal to the metal, then the Fed is really not going to be able to get to 2%. And so, But I have all the respect of the world for Waller, and I think that he won that argument, but the Fed still has a lot of work to do in my mind. And, and yeah. again, the reason people are so upset is that if you look at the cost of bread, the cost of gasoline, the cost of airfare, everything's up from 35 to 50% since Joe Biden that's took right. office. That's right. And that's why people are still concerned about this. So even if inflation were to slow, then we're at a really you know much worse place. And John, you you have to admit, it is very tough to get inflation down if you have a $2 trillion deficit. And that's where we're going. It's $1.6 trillion now uh, in an annual right. basis. And it's probably going up to two because they're still spending without any pay for it. That's right. The Biden administration has been undermining the Fed's attempt to bring down inflation by running a very reckless fiscal policy. We are running the kind of fiscal deficits that you should see in a crisis when you have unemployment up at 8 right. to 10 to 12%. Not when you have unemployment at 3.7%. There's no reason to be doing this now, yet they're doing it. It makes the Fed's job much harder. I think this is one reason that inflation is likely to keep going up or at least get stuck where it is, mm. not come down. So all these dreams mm. people have of the Fed cutting this year, cutting four times, that's not going to happen. Three times is probably not going to happen. I think it will be, if we get one cut, that will be impressive. Kevin, there's something that's happening outside of the purview of the Fed or the U.S. government. That's what's happening in China. They're, they're going into what appears to be a defa deflationary 
uh, rather than inflationary spiral. Mm -hmm. is, is that making it easier for the Fed to get inflation down? Is some of their deflation spilling over into the rest of the world? Right. Absolutely. You know, you, you nailed it, because if you look at it, there's Asia, which is almost in recession. If you look at it at the aggregate and Europe, you know, has a whole bunch of countries with negative growth last year. And so global demand has slowed quite a bit. And that's been one of the reasons why inflation is moderated, not just Fed policy. But to return to the earlier point, I just looked at the CBO 10 year outlook. And believe it or not, over the next 10 years, they say that debt held by the public is going to increase by about five trillion more than GDP. Wow. OK. Wow. More than the increase of GDP. And so that's how reckless this current fiscal policy is. And there's just no way like and you could ask Waller about this. Like if that actually happens, is inflation going to be under yeah. control? And there's yeah. just no way there's no economic right. model that says that you could have inflation. Well, under whomever control is the next thing. president, they got a big task ahead of them. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Thank you very much sure. for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, John and Kevin.